Jason Cygnus is a Lowcountry resident and a civil engineer who wants to help the Charleston County Council's district free area become a better area for residents. And that's one of the reasons why he's running for Charleston County Council to represent that area. I talk one on one with him for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. Aiden Cygnus, welcome to Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on. Oh, I appreciate it greatly. Uh, needless to say, you are a low country native. You are also a civil engineer. And now you are a Republican candidate for Charleston County Council's district free seat. And as we sit here right now, Hayden, what does that area consist of? Yeah, uh, District 3 is actually a pretty vast district. It covers a uh, majority of the uh, Charleston Peninsula, uh, north of uh, Broad Street, excludes mm -hmm. the east side. Uh, and then hugs the Cooper River up to Park Circle area. Um, and then it also crosses the river over into Mount Pleasant and it's bordered by um, Chuck Dolly 526. And that's very rough. Wow. It, it, with all of these areas that actually covers District 3, why Charleston County Council? Why now? So, um, you know, I want to do uh, everything I can to help Charleston. As you said, I am a Charleston native. This is my home and I want to improve the lives of uh, our citizens as much as I can. And as a civil engineer, I've been able to work on several projects here in Charleston County. I spent my entire career here in Charleston County. And a lot of what I do as a civil engineer, I work with municipalities as well as my clients um, to work on infrastructure projects, drainage projects, I deal with uh, zoning, rezoning challenges, and what members of Charleston County Council get to do is work through those problems. And I believe that as a civil engineer, I think our county will benefit from having a civil engineer sitting on council to use his professional knowledge to make those decisions. What zoning and rezoning challenges are there right now in District 3? So uh, a lot of zoning and rezoning issues are just if you're trying to either build uh, a home or you're trying to be a business coming into the area, um, some areas are not zoned appropriately, but the land is there. We really don't have much land uh, here in Charleston now. People keep on moving in, we keep on building stuff. And so we have to get creative with where we're going to put the much needed uh, businesses and homes for people to live on. So uh, doing rezoning issues, we want to make sure that we're allowing um, builders to build in areas where people can live and work and not get stuck in too much traffic. But we also can't just put houses on a piece of land because it's there. Uh, if the infrastructure already isn't there that can support them, if traffic's bad in that area and we throw 40 homes into that area, it's just going to make it worse. So we need to think in advance of if we're going to put some homes in this area, can we do some future work to improve the traffic areas? And will this zone currently or rezoning it to where it can handle more people, and more homes? And we all know these traffic issues and, well, traffic issues and tra traffic locations where there are hotspots here in the low country. But in District 3, where exactly can you revitalize the traffic areas right now? There are countless places here uh, in District 3. Um, and you just take uh, Rivers Avenue, Scroll Avenue, sure. um, Mount Pleasant. Uh, I know uh, one of the... Mount Pleasant Town Council members was talking about trying to get a flyover from 17. Uh, I mean, you get that bottleneck as soon as you come off of downtown into Mount Pleasant, you hit a stoplight. And uh, his idea was to have a flyover in that area so we can at least move forward. Uh, that's one opportunity. Uh, and then, you know, <clears throat> I know this is a contentious issue, but 526. Um, the Mark Clark extension and widening does run through District 3. Um, I'm bordered, uh, District 3 is bordered by 526 in Mount Pleasant, but 526 also bisects District 3 uh, in the Park Circle area. Right. Uh, and if you've ever tried to get on 526 from North Charleston uh, at 
8 to 10 a.m. in the morning or you're trying to get off between 4 and 6 p.m., you know where those bottlenecks are. Wow. Where okay, I want to get to that 526 East in just a moment, sure. but where else could you put flyovers to reduce that traffic in your area? Uh, in, you know, in my area, there are, um, it's going to be difficult to get some flyovers in the uh, North Charleston area and then specifically downtown. But, you know, I want to emphasize that, um, you know, you can only vote for me if you live in District 3. Right. But as a county councilman, I'm going to be working for all citizens of Charleston County. So there are other areas in Charleston County that I want to work on. Um, I mean, that Johns Island flyover finally looks like it's getting approved on Main Road. And that's something that I've been following very closely my entire professional career and most of my life growing up. I grew up on Johns Island and I know everybody used to say when I was growing up there in high school and middle school that, you know, Johns Island was so far away. It really wasn't. It was like 20, 25 minutes to get out there. It's the same distance now. But it takes 45 minutes to an hour to get out there. Traffic um, on 17 backs up if you're trying to go on Main Road. Traffic backs up on Maybank Highway. So I would like to work in those areas as well, not just focus on projects specifically in District 3, but in Charleston County as a whole. I, I, I want to get to that right now because in 1999, there was a 1999 plan. <laughs> that feels like yesterday in my mind that uh, the Charleston County Council actually developed, which was a suburban rural area edge. And it was established as a tool to delineate the rural area from the urban and suburb sub 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 suburban areas of Charleston, that is. So with all this traffic and growth in that area right now, where exactly is that edge in your mind, Hayden? Yeah, that edge is definitely getting pushed um, everywhere. Where we are right now in Charleston County, um, Johns Island is getting developed constantly. Um, it's pushing out towards the Allendale area as well. Wadmala people are starting to move out there. Um, the peninsula is basically as full as you can get. Um, North Charleston in District 3, uh, they are starting to look at the old Navy Yard and putting some housing in that area. It's going to be mixed use and affordable, attainable workforce housing. I think that's definitely going to benefit us because we do have space out there where we can put some uh, communities. And, uh, you know, really, besides that, it seems like if you ever go on I-26 in the morning or at rush hour in the afternoon, a lot of the people are moving outside of Charleston County into Berkeley or Dorchester County and then commuting into Charleston County for work. Wow. In your district, how many of those people are actually commuting from those counties into Charleston County each day? Uh, you know, in my district alone, uh, um, I couldn't tell you the exact percentage it is, but, you know, if you look at the traffic in the morning of everyone coming into downtown um, to work, it is a high number of people. Uh, one of my employees here, uh, I work, I live and work in District 3, and one of my employees, he lives in Berkeley County and commutes to the office every morning. Um, so I know that firsthand, his frustrations with uh, traveling with coming down here, it takes them sometimes an hour, hour, 15 minutes to get here every day. And um, I know where he's coming from. What type of businesses would you put in your area to keep, you know, those people in those areas versus trying to travel in and out of these areas each and every day? Right. Um, so, you know, a lot of people who are coming down here to work um, from out of the district and outside of the county, uh, you got to look at who are our major um, businesses here already. And the medical university and the other hospitals here in District 3, they have a lot of employees who travel down here. They get in their car, they drive down the interstate, then they park their bu in a bus lot, and then they get on the bus to go to work. Um, Boeing is outside of my district, but a lot of employees live outside of the county who work at Boeing. Um, and then Charleston County itself is one of the largest employers in the county and i would hate to say that probably a lot of our uh, employees here in the county also live outside of the county and have to travel to work wow <laughs> I, I, well let me ask you this dan well how many more people do you foresee moving into your district over the next five to ten years well you know we have 
on average, 30 people are moving to Charleston County every day. So 30 people moving here every day, 365 days um, a year for five years, and you split it up where they can move to. I mean, that's a hard number to assume which districts they're going to move over to. Everyone's trying to move into uh, West Ashley as much as they can or Johns Island as much as they can. But over five years, I, I couldn't say why not uh, somewhere around uh, 50,000 over five years, 10,000 a year. Does that sound uh, that's you said over five years, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So that's 54,000 are moving here in five years. So 10,000 over the next five years moving into District 3. And, splitting and, that up. Splitting that up. And, and I, I, this is, might be another complicated question, uh, Hayden, but mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you see as far as demographics? What, how do you see that from a trend standpoint? Um, like uh, age wise, yes, sir. Oh, like yes, young sir. professional. Yes, I would say it's definitely more young professionals are going to be moving down to Charleston. Um, you know, right now, the great thing about Charleston is in South Carolina alone is uh, it's a great place to live. And I know people um, are upset about our county taxes right now, but South Carolina sales tax, or taxes as a whole and just being able to live here, you're close to the beach. Everything screams for people to want to move here from they're fleeing areas like New York, Illinois, California, and they're coming here. And you're not going to get um, many retirees coming to Charleston. You'll get a few who are going to the beach and stuff like that. But I'd say they're more going to um, a little bit further south or um, maybe a little bit north in the North Morrow Beach area. But definitely young professionals are graduating college and they're coming here to work. This is a great place to work and raise a family. And that's why they're coming. So then how do you actually enhance the quality of life for Charleston County residents while preserving what actually makes this low country really great? No, that's great. I mean, um, I, that is part of the reason why I'm running is we have to keep Charleston, Charleston while we're also growing. And so we need to look at um, future land use and where are we going to establish these communities and businesses and where are we going to be putting these projects to, you know, house them or have them drive without, you know, bulldozing over any historic communities or ruining any um, uh, historic areas. And, you know, right now, like the city of Charleston has a great historic preservation team there. You know, you can't come in and just tear down a historic home and build a new big home just because you want it. You do have to keep that. And we need to keep that in mind as we are bringing people in that, you know, we want you to come. We want you to work here. We want you to live here. But at the end of the day, you need to realize that this is still Charleston and we're not going to make all these changes just because, um, you know, you, you want to build this giant house in a very historic area. Yeah, and obviously what you're saying is a lot what other people are <laughs> echoing around the low country, of course. But where, where in your district can you actually put these businesses and homes without interrupting what you have currently? Right. Uh, so the Navy Yard is a great area uh, because I know the Navy Yard is a historic area, but, you know, it's historic because we used to have a Navy shipyard there and the shipyard is no longer here. So there is just this vast amount of property there that we can put people in. They can live and work there. Uh, mixed use housing. We can have some businesses in the area. We have some places where they can go to restaurants, live and eat, and they won't have to commute as far to go to places to have enjoy their life when they're not at work. Um, the Union Pier project that's coming in, that's technically in my district as well. Um, that's going to be a great place. You know, we're getting rid of the cruise ships. We're going to have all this um, area available and we can bring in more workforce housing. And then mixed use. So there will be a few hotels, I believe some restaurant areas and um, businesses will come into that area. And then you're already in the downtown area where most people work. So you won't have to commute as much. Let me just jump into that. 
Union Pier. Uh, as you know, Low Country businessman Ben Navarro has agreed to purchase the Union Pier, according to Channel 2, the 70 acre property on the peninsula, which currently serves as a terminal for Carnival Cruises, is slated to be redeveloped after the South Carolina ports previously announced it would not renew the cruise line's contract for that space. Uh, Mayor Tech, uh, Mayor Tech, Mayor, Mayor Coxwell <laughs> has outlined his vision for the property prior to the sale that included providing public access to the waterfront, adding significant green space, utilizing lower density and height restrictions for building and affordability. So let me ask you this, Hayden, because obviously you're a civil engineer. In your mind, what are the new development height concerns with Union Payer? The, uh, the height, when you say height, do you mean like building heights or do you just mean yes. height and concerns? Yes, so sir. building heights, um, so, you know, Charleston, city of Charleston has uh, height requirements and we don't want to ruin the skyline of the city of Charleston. And some people have bought property uh, one street or two streets back and they had this view of the water line and they were concerned that um, multiple story properties are going to obstruct their view and all you're going to be able to see is concrete buildings and i know no one wants to see that but in this property um you didn't have a, the first off you didn't have the greatest view of the river it was a concrete lot with a bunch of cars cruise ships heavy traffic there's some warehouses out there they have not been maintained it's not like you're losing a great view but as long as we're staying within the height requirements, we're not putting in any type of skyscrapers or what we call Charleston skyscrapers, which is anything over like five or six stories, really six or seven stories high. Um, I think that will really benefit the area. And um, I, I think that the benefits outweigh the cons. OK, what other benefits should outweigh the cons in this particular situation? Well, the increase of areas for affordable, attainable housing here in the low country, in the Charleston area, that's a big concern of people thinking that they're getting pushed out of the peninsula um, by these projects. But we're trying to bring it in where you can work, live and work here in downtown and still be able to afford it. And then being able to have, like I said, mixed use developments where we can have residential or commercial on the first floor so people can go there live, work, eat, all in the same area. They'll get more cars off. That increases the idea of pedestrian bicycle traffic in the downtown area, getting cars off the roads. I think those are all a lot of benefits to this area. And when you look at that in the interior of the project, do you believe from the previous design plans that we've seen, is it too dense in your mind? Um, I haven't been able to look um, too much in the most recent one, but I believe that it has been reduced in density um, and that I think it's needed in that area um, where we have. And I think there's definitely going to be some revisions as we're building through it and going. This is not something that's happening tomorrow. This isn't a guarantee that everything is going to be built that we want to be built. Um, so right now I'm pretty happy with how it is, but there's definitely going to be changes down the road and we'll see what comes as we start moving forward. And of course, I mean, for many, many years growing up here in the low country, born and raised here, of course, I used to work down in that area near the city market. So I know there was a lot of flooding in that area, but what integrate planning and urban landscape design for Union Pier would actually fix potential flooding in that area? Well, um, so you got to take the peninsula as a whole for this area. Yes, we do have flooding in the market area. We do have flooding around the Union Pier area. Um, and there are talks about, you know, the seawall. And everyone's talking about it, saying it's going to come. You know, we have to get the funding. We're going to have to go through planning. It's going to be years of construction before this happens. And in the meantime, you need to look at what's going on in this project. They're not just taking a concrete slab and building buildings on top of that. There is some intricate work they're putting into with getting green space and water flow through that area. So it's not just concrete on top of concrete. They are actually planning for that as we wait for decisions on what's going to happen with the seawall and future drainage issues here in Charleston. Do you support that seawall? The seawall? 
You know, it is a very complicated issue. Um, and I've looked into it. I've gone to plenty of Army Corps of Engineers discussions about it. Um, what we need to realize is if we are going to move forward with this project, I mean, it is billions of dollars in years in the works. I know a lot of citizens, even though District 3 falls in the peninsula, are they going to think that we're just fixing the people on the peninsula's problem and forgetting about the people in West Ashley, James, or Johns Island? Because they have flooding issues there as well. So we need to make sure that if we do move forward with something like the seawall, we're not letting those other areas be forgotten. Um, and I think in the meantime, uh, while we are debating on moving forward with this project or getting funding for it, we can look into trying to fix some of the areas um, that have drainage issues that aren't necessarily in the peninsula. And, you know, one thing that we can do that is a little bit quicker and cheaper than a seawall um, and it seems simple to say, but uh, we do have to kind of put a lot of thought into it, is where areas that have some significant flooding, especially after a hard rain event or these hurricanes, we need to make sure that those storm pipes, have we are they cleaned out? Have we scoped them recently? And if they are dirty, can we clear them out? If they're just, you know, blocked, they're not going to drain properly. And if we can go in and scope them out, I'm not saying this is going to fix every issue but is a cheaper way to look into something and maybe provide some relief to those areas in the meantime, while we're debating on uh, moving forward with this massive project. Speaking of which, in your particular district, what are the current drainage issues and how many storm pipes are actually in your district that you need repair for what would actually need repair repairing right now? Uh, that is a really great question. And unfortunately in the peninsula, it's not a hundred percent, uh, written out, they know where most of them are, but this is, you know, we've been here since 1670, so we don't know where everything is necessarily. Some pipes are very old, and it does take a long process to go in and scope them out um, in the uh, peninsula area. Mount Pleasant has a little bit better idea of it, so does North Charleston. And that's why I didn't want to make it sound like it's so simple that we just go in and scope them out because there's so many extensive pipes where they are. What we need to do is try to focus on areas of concern. We don't just need to start uh, at the tip of the peninsula and start moving north. We just need to go where people are calling, where there are issues. We need to document those areas and see if that is something that we can work on. And what other drainage issues are you seeing right now in your particular district? Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure how often you go over to uh, Haygood Avenue oh, yes. in the West Edge yeah. area. <laughs> that um, Haygood Avenue right there uh, in between West Edge and the soccer fields floods oh. every high tide. Um, it's, it doesn't matter if it's raining or a king tide or anything. It floods where that uh, Gadsden Creek area is. And it brings in this uh, the salt water in underneath the people's cars who park there on the street. It also brings in all the trash and debris that's in that pond back into people's yards and then brings some of their debris back into the creek that eventually goes out to the river. So uh, I was happy to hear that that um, lawsuit, uh, I think, is moving forward and that the West Edge community is going to be able to develop in that area. And I think that's actually going to benefit us uh, environmentally. Um, because that creek is has a lot of pollutants in it. It's not really uh, benefiting us having it there. And we are going to be able to build some more areas for people to work and live in that area. How do you develop back there? <laughs> and I know that very, very, very well going to Burke High School as a student. But how do you develop back there smartly? Well, first off, you have to understand what the, uh, what the soils are in that area. It's all uh, landfill area. It's all marsh and landfill. And so you need to know going into it that it's not going to be something that's going to be cheap as a developer or a builder. It's going to be pile supported. Um, we're going to have to go in and make sure that this we have the funds. Whoever wants to move forward with it knows well that they're going into a project that will have to be pile supported, which will be uh, actually give the buildings a little bit more resilience. When you build these projects like the West Edge, the 10 West Edge, the 99 West Edge, I was involved in both of those projects. Okay. Um, when you start with such a great foundation 
to prevent settlement or earthquake issues. Um, those buildings do hold up um, in storms like hurricanes. So uh, that's that's the kind of really just you need to know what you're getting into. That this isn't you can't bring somebody out of town who is not familiar with the low country and our area and just assume that they come in at a very low cost. It's going to be expensive on the front end. They need to know that, but it pays off in the long run. Wow. Well, who could you bring in right now, if you could, <laughs> hypothetically speaking, to help with this new development? Uh, uh, there are plenty of people I've worked with here in Charleston who have experience. Uh, I don't want to forget anybody, but I know um, specifically who I worked with on 10 West Edge oh, and 99 West Edge. B.L. Harbor International, they're working on the Cooper downtown right now. Oh, uh, yes. Trident Construction. They've done a lot of work. They did 22 West Edge, and they did all the site work around the West Edge projects. Um, and then J.E. Dunn, uh, we worked on 99 West Edge. So any of those three have experience specifically in that area, and I'd feel confident working with them again in that, on new projects. And, and speaking of new projects and development, I wanted to go back to Union Pier quickly, Hayden, because I wanted to know, wouldn't a TIF be ideal for that area? You know, I, that is definitely a question that's going on right now in front of county council, and they haven't made a decision uh, last I heard. But uh, and there, there's a lot to weigh on that decision about, you know, it's 30 years, I believe, right. of them not paying property taxes. And that is a very long time. And that's something to think about, because even though it's in the city of Charleston, the county does provide resources that they will be utilizing. And we know who's going to pay for it. And I believe. The mayor has a pretty good idea, and so does uh, Ben Navarro, about like sales tax. We'll go back into it. And um, I, you know, I think it's definitely worth pursuing at this stage of the game. Um, I would like to know a little bit more information and meet with them in person to discuss. Uh, unfortunately, I feel like they're going to make a vote before I get on council. But uh, if it's still up for a decision um, after this election, after I get on to council, I would like to meet with them and just ask them a few questions, make sure that everything's buttoned up and they've thought of everything. But right now, from what I've heard, I, you know, I would probably want to move forward after a few minutes of discussion. What resources can the county provide to this union peer develop? Well, I mean, what is the county council, what does the county provide to everyone? Um, you know, landfills, where's the trash going to go? It's going to go to the county's landfill. That's first off. So you bring in all these homes, that's more trash that's going to go into it. So we have to think about that. Uh, the EMS team, um, if anyone needs to go to the hospital, they're going to be calling the county EMS. Coroner is through um, the county as well. Um, and then there's a bunch of other resources that the county oversees that people just assume that the city helps out on. And one big thing is you got to look at like the sheriff's department. Um, Everyone thinks in the city of Charleston, town of Mount Pleasant, state of North Charleston, that it's just those city police officers or town police officers that are helping you out. But the county sheriff also provides resources to assist in those areas. So if they ever need help and the county sheriff has to come in to provide assistance, that's another resource that we're spending um, for the union period area that we aren't getting compensated on the property taxes. What a tip for for the Union Pier development be a crutch to development down there? Would be a crutch? Yes, sir. No, I don't think it will be a crutch. Okay. I think it'll okay. be a benefit. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and going back quickly, uh, I'm running out of time, unfortunately. Going back, obviously, to that 526 East, you know, the widening and whatnot, what right. impact study would you want to request from Charleston County Council before you actually make a vote on that? Well, I mean, they've already voted on it, um, so I would not be able to, um, it doesn't matter what they give me, I wouldn't be able to vote for it or against it. But as far as I'm concerned about the 526 extension, um, like I've said about these other projects, I've been in plenty of meetings listening to the DOT come in and present um, ideas about 526. You know, it's been a project that's been in the process for uh, roughly 30 years now, and uh, with people moving in to Charleston County every day, with the traffic being as bad as it is every day, and it's just getting worse. And 526 is a nightmare. 
if you're trying to get from North Charleston or West Ashley to Mount Pleasant or vice versa, it is terrible. We need to do something about it. And this widening of 526, especially what they're planning on doing in the Long Point Road area to start off with, to bring the trucks off, which definitely cause a bottleneck coming into Mount Pleasant. I think this is a great idea. Um, and the, my whole thing about it is uh, we just need to make sure that we stay on top of this project. It's a lot of money. It's going to take a long time. No one's saying it's going to happen tomorrow. But if we don't stay on top of this project, it could be 10, 20 years down the road from now. We have nothing to show for it. But, you know, spent a lot of money on nothing. and. My experience as a civil engineer and a project manager, I've overseen many projects similar to this. Um, the Port Access Road project, the Volvo car interchange, yes. you can't just let them go by and just assume everything is going great. You need to have um, your, your, your eyes on it. Just make sure that they are moving forward and see where the roadblocks are. And another important thing is making sure you're bringing in personnel who know how to work in this area. Uh, that doesn't mean they have to be from Charleston to work in Charleston, but someone who has some experience on this size of a project, they need to have some experience in soils or areas similar to this area because something that people um, don't know when they come from out of town, they've never worked here before, is we have some wet um, seasons during the winter, and that really slows down everything. If you have this um really extreme uh schedule you think you're going to make and you didn't compensate for that you're going to be behind the entire project wow. how much money i mean how much money is this going to cost the county for the funding of this widening uh well so the idea behind the tax referendum oh, over yes. 25 years right uh right. you're supposed to bring in something like it's either 5.4 billion dollars or it's going to last for 25 years which everyone comes first um and I believe they want to put something like uh, it's less than half. It's like two point three billion dollars into the widening and extension. Um, and yes, that is a very large price tag. But you, know, you think about how big it is. Um, it is it, it's going to cost about that much money. And uh, but you know, with that tax referendum, you can't just focus on the money's just going to the Mark Clark. Yes, they are getting about a third of the money, but a lot of money is also going to go to other projects and there's going to go to Greenbelt projects. Right. And if we, we need these projects to go forward, we need the sales tax. And the reason why I'm for it is it's not a sales tax increase. It's a continuation of an existing sales tax. I think that's really important for people to understand. I don't want to vote to raise taxes, but this tax wasn't going to go away. Um, if we vote no one, it's going to continue on to 2027. And then there is plenty of opportunities for people to come up with other ideas to continue it from there. So it's not a tax increase, just a continuation. So in order to continue that, what other ideas do you have in mind that would actually work? For the 526 area or for oh, yes, just sir. other areas? No, I mean, for the 526 area, I'm, I'm, I'm supporting what they're doing in the 526 area. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the green belt and the, the, the other projects. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The other projects. I mean, there, there's countless other projects that people seem to forget. Um, yeah. In the last one, the last county council meetings about this, uh, a gentleman came up and um, was complaining about, you know, how the last sales tax didn't go anywhere. And then someone actually came up behind him a couple of people later and listed out a number of projects that they went to. So there are several other smaller projects we can work on. And what I'd like to do with that money, since it's a limited to the rest of the amount of money that's going to 526, we need to look in areas that have um, some of the worst traffic congestions and see if we can focus on them uh, first and start scaling down to other areas and using the money the best way we can to provide the biggest impact to our citizens. That's why another reason why I like the 526 uh, project, because it's going to impact a huge number of our citizens in Charleston County. It's going to go from Mount Pleasant, North Charleston, uh, West Ashley, James and Johns Island. It's going to be hard for you to be uh, a citizen here in Charleston County and not benefit from the 5.6 extension. And that's Thanks. why I think we need to focus on with the other projects.
And I wish I had more time. And I tried for many, many months now to get your opponent, Rob Weirman, on Quintus Close Ups, but he has not responded. So hopefully he'll come on soon. But for now, Hayden Cygnus, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to Quintus Close Ups. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.